thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about a radical way of looking at cancer. Our investigation into strawberry birthmark has led us to discover the origin of this tumor being stem cells arising from the placenta. We went on to discover that these stem cells are controlled by this uh, hormone system called the renin angiotensin system, which has been known to control blood pressure. The discoveries underscore the way that we treat strawberry birthmarks today, using simple, low-cost medications such as beta blockers and ACE inhibitors. This is a baby, three months old, with a strawberry birthmark on the cheek and the eye socket, pushing her eye upwards. Here, one week, one month, and five months after treatment with propranolol, one of the beta blockers, taken by mouth at home, away from the hospital. Here is a five-month-old child with a large strawberry birthmark on her face and neck, four months after captopril treatment, one of the ACE inhibitors taken by mouth at home. And that's her before she went to school. What I've just shown you are two examples of drug repurposing. A new drug would cost upwards of 12 of $1 billion to develop and takes on the average 12 years to get to the market and has a one in 10,000 chances of being successful. And that's why we pay a lot for new drugs. Repurposed drugs cost a fraction of that and less time and is a lot more likely to be successful. Cancer is the leading cause of death with huge human and economic costs. It would affect one out of three of us, one out of three people in the world. It is the biggest cause of death, responsible for almost a third of all deaths. The World Health Organization estimates that in 2018, there will be 18 million new cases and about half of them will die. In New Zealand, there will be 25,000 new cancer cases, and on top of that, 11,000 non-melanoma skin cancer. It has been projected that by 2035, the incidence of cancer would increase by 50%. A horrifying prospect. This is mainly due to the aging population, but also some increase in the population size and also the change of our lifestyle. The conventional treatment for cancer includes surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. They are highly invasive and causes loss of quality of life, and they are partially effective. On the average, 40% of the cancer patients would die within five years despite the radical treatment. The physical cost of cancer treatment in this country is a billion dollars a year, and this is rapidly rising because of the aging population, but also the escalating cost of new drugs. An effective, low-cost and less invasive treatment is urgently needed. The prevailing concept of cancer is called a stochastic model of cancer. This model proposes that a cancer develops because one normal cell in our body undergoes a series of mutations and becomes a cancer cell. This cancer cell then makes exact copies of itself, forming into a tumor. Current research and treatment of cancer focus on the cancer cells. And we are hell-bent to find the silver bullet to kill these cancer cells. In the last five years, we at the Gillis McIndoe Research Institute have applied our knowledge in the understanding of 
straw birthmark into the investigation of cancer. By a radically new approach, based on the cancer stem cell concept. The cancer stem cell concept is also called the hierarchical model of cancer. It proposes that cancer stem cells are the origin of cancer. If you imagine cancer is like a beehive, if you look at a beehive, you will see worker bees. Those are our equivalent of cancer cells. But if you look deeper, Inside the beehive, there is a queen bee. The queen bee is the reason why there is a beehive. The queen bee gives rise to the worker bees, our cancer cells. But the queen bee can also make exact copies of itself and move away and make another beehive. This would explain why cancer will recur locally and at distant sites. We also know that these cancer stem cells resist chemotherapy and radiotherapy, and when they are threatened, they go into a slow cycle state, and this would explain why cancer will recur many years after remission. Based on this concept, we looked at a number of different cancers. Tongue cancer was the first cancer we looked at. Tongue cancer is the worst cancer in the mouth. This slide here shows the presence of cancer stem cells, outlined in green, a marker called CD44, a cancer stem cell marker, marking the cell membrane of the cancer stem cells. You can see each, the outline of each of those cells there. The red SOX2 is the embryonic stem cell marker expressed by these cancer stem cells. The blue dots are the nucleus of the cells. So these cells have the property like embryonic stem cells, like cells that we expect to see soon after conception. We went on to discover that these cancer stem cells, here highlighted in green, another marker of cancer stem cells, express the renin-angiotensin system, or in this case, one of the components of renin-angiotensin system called pro-renin receptor highlighted in red. And there are a number of major components which uh, are expressed by the cancer stem cells. If you superimpose the two images, you see orange in color. Red plus green equals orange. This says that the cancer stem cells in tongue cancer exclusively express the renin angiotensin system, the same system we discovered in strawberry birthmark. We went on to demonstrate the presence of cancer stem cells that express the renin angiotensin system in melanoma, another deadly form of cancer, and also glioblastoma, another very aggressive cancer. If you took a piece of the cancer, a brain cancer, and grow that in the lab, within two or three weeks, you see this clump of cells it's a little brown, brownish in color. And these are cancer stem cells. And within another couple of weeks, you see these spheres form. These are characteristic of cancer stem cells. So we can grow cancer stem cells out of the cancer tissue sample. And we know that they are cancer stem cells because we have markers that allow us to identify them. These are four markers that we use to demonstrate that these are indeed cancer stem cells. The queen bees, we grow out of the brain cancer. If we were right, and if this concept is correct, we would expect to find the same thing in all types of cancers. And in fact, we had demonstrated the presence of cancer stem cells that express the common regulatory system, that is, the renin angiotensin system, in 14 types of cancers affecting most of the major organ systems that I've listed here. Now, the renin angiotensin system can be blocked by simple medications that are commonly prescribed. If this concept is correct, what happens to patients who take these medications? 
Over the last 20 years, there has been multiple publications showing that patients taking one of those medications have a better survival from cancer or less likelihood to de develop cancer. We know that there are a number of major pathways involved in cancer. And here you see uh, just two of those uh, pathways, the insulin growth factor receptor 1 pathways and uh, COX-2. There are medications that can block these pathways. And what happens to patients who take these medications? For example, metformin that is used to treat, to, uh, for treating diabetes and uh, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin. What happens to patients who take those medications? The literature shows that patients who are on one of those medications are less likely to get cancer, and if they did get cancer, they are more likely to survive. There was a meta-analysis published at the end of last year analyzing 55 studies of the ilk I just described. It shows that patients, cancer patients who take one of those medications have a 20% chance of less likelihood to develop recurrence and death from their cancer. Based on our work in the laboratory and also published work, we have come up with a new cancer treatment by targeting at cancer stem cells, the queen bees, not the cancer cells. Using a combination of medications, they are off patent. These medications target the renin angiotensin system. We have now received ethics approval and SCOT approval to proceed with a clinical trial to cover glioblastoma, melanoma, mouth cancer, and metastatic squamous cancer. Heart Hospital has agreed to host the study, and we have now begun recruiting patients for glioblastoma. This study will go on for three years, and we believe that at the end of that, we will be able to demonstrate whether this is effective or not. Glioblastoma is the deadly form of cancer. It affects people at their prime. And the conventional treatment is surgery plus radiotherapy plus chemotherapy at a cost of $60,000 a year per patient. But despite this radical treatment, half of the patients would die within 15 months and only 5% of the patients would survive long term. That is pretty grim. As scientists, we have eureka moments but our real price is to translate discoveries in the lab into better patient care. We are at a threshold of perhaps realizing the hope that this study will show real benefit for patients with glioblastoma here in New Zealand and globally. And we hope that we, with uh, uh, sufficient funding, we will be able to extend the study into the other three types of cancer. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the staff and the students and our collaborators of the GMRI for the contribution, particularly Dr. Itin Tiang, who is the scientific, chief scientific officer who oversees the laboratory work. But we'd like also to thank the, our donors who have allowed us to get this far and to allow us to get the study off the ground and we hope that we will be able to continue the effort and um, for the better uh, betterment of the people in this country and the world. Thank you very much.